Kansas City mayoral debate. Good evening, I'm Brad Stevens. Welcome to the Kansas City mayoral debate hosted by KCTV5 and K KCMO Talk Radio. This is the first debate featuring Jolie Justice and Quentin Lucas, the two candidates to emerge from a very crowded primary. Thank you both for coming in tonight. We appreciate it. And moderating the debate tonight with me is KCMO's Pete Mundo. Pete, we go over the rules for us. Yeah, Brad, we are going to have each candidate getting one minute to respond to answer a question. The opponent will have 30 seconds to answer a coin flip before the show determined that Quentin Lucas will have the first opening statement. The order will then be reversed for the closing statement. So Mr. Lucas. Good evening, everybody, and thank you, Kansas City, for watching tonight and for voting before. My name's Quint Lucas. I was raised on the east side of Kansas City, raised by a single mother who raised me and my two sisters and worked hard every day. It's an exciting time in Kansas City. There's lots of momentum, but that momentum needs to be evenly shared. We need to make sure that in addition to working on projects and big deals, we also take care of our neighborhoods. We fix the potholes, we pick up the trash, and we make sure that we're addressing long-standing issues like violent crime in Kansas City and how we can support our educational infrastructure. Over our next 30 minutes, I hope to tell you about many of my answers and solutions for how we can make a better Kansas City well into the future. One that stands up for neighborhoods, that stands up for you. I look forward to talking to you, and thank you all for having us today. Thank you. Candidate Justice, your opening statement. Thank you so much. It's great to be here and really appreciate this opportunity. You know, we have seen a lot of progress in this city over the last eight years. And, and one of the things that I've seen as I'm out in the community is that we still have a lot of work to do. Over the course of this campaign, I've had the opportunity to actually walk the entire length of the city. I started at 163rd in Prospect and walked all the way to 144th in Inner Urban Road. And along the way, I had the opportunity to meet with neighborhood leaders. And one of the things that I hear as I walk across the city is that we're not going to be done. Our Kansas City success story will not be written until we have that same sort of momentum and progress in every single neighborhood throughout our city. And that means we've got to get things right, like violent crime. We have to make sure that we're focusing on streets and sidewalks and picking up the trash. And that's exactly what I'll do as your next mayor. All right, my first question is for candidate uh, Lucas. Quentin, you told us on primary night that you thought that voters would begin to see a clear distinction sure. between the two candidates. What can you say tonight uh, to tell uh, prospective voters that is a clear distinction between you and candidate Justice? You know, first of all, I want to say I have great respect for candidate Justice. Uh, I've been looking up to her for years since uh, I first started in the practice of law. So when I think of distinctions, it all comes from a positive perspective. But I think how we've approached issues is different. You know, when I talk about collaboration, that's something I've done every day on city council. I've met with the superintendents of every one of 14 school districts in Kansas City to talk about incentive reform. I was talking about social workers with the Kansas City Police Department several years ago, really trying to make sure we're getting active in addressing issues long term. I'm not one for task forces. I'm not one for longer conversations. Instead, I think the city wants us to get certain things done. And I've been someone on city council who's introduced ordinances about housing, about crime, about incentives. And I'm somebody who's going to keep working each day to make sure we have good solutions and strong solutions to what Kansas City needs. Thank you. Well, uh, Jolie Justice, the contract for city manager Troy Schulte is obviously up in March. It's something that's been a topic here locally lately. When you look at him, his contract, what he's done over the past decade, would you at this point extend his contract? How would you view Troy Schulte and the job he's done thus far? So I have a, I have a good working relationship with Troy Schulte, and, and over the last few years, I've had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with Troy. And one of the things that I've seen is that he knows how to get things moving in Kansas City, and a lot of the progress that we've seen, whether it's downtown or whether it's filling some of the food deserts that we have in our community, has been become because of his leadership. And so one of the things that we have to do moving forward is make sure that he is willing to implement the vision that I have as the next mayor of Kansas City, and I'm confident that he's ready to do that. At the same time, we all know we've got 13 people on the council and we need to make sure that this is a collaborative conversation and that we're having a conversation about what the entire city sees and what the entire city wants and I look forward with with working with Troy Schulte to make sure that we keep this city moving forward Councilman Lucas, how would you uh, respond to that question? You know, I think I've had a good relationship with Troy Schulte as well. I think the role of the mayor is to really set out an agenda and to say we want to get these things done. 
And so often in Kansas City, and it's good that we're very nice people, but I also think it's important when there are people complaining today about trash pickup in the Northland or talking about how can we actually strategically fix potholes, we need to make sure that we're actually getting that stuff done. So as mayor, I look to sitting down with Troy, having a good conversation, and making sure our departments are responsive to Kansas Cityans. This next question for uh, both of you, we'll start with you, Quentin. You're both, uh, this is an apolitical race, obviously, but you are both registered Democrats. There are 22 confirmed Democratic candidates in the presidential race, none in the past 10 minutes we know of, so we're going to stick with the number 22 for now. Um, who would you most align yourself with in this primary field? Oh, well, that, that's a great question so far, <laughs> one I haven't thought of yet. You know, two people I've been watching a lot of uh, lately, one is uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, former prosecutor, I think somebody who's been impactful and interesting. And then I also do like Joe Biden and the reputation he's built over the years of addressing a number of things. I don't agree with him on everything, but I do think the experience with President Obama those eight years does give us, I guess, a good set of things. Council you know, Justice. Great question, and, and one of the things that we know to do is make sure that we sit back and wait a while, right? <laughs> because the reality is, is there are 22 folks out there. But, but I will say this, I love ideas as it relates to making sure that we take of care of quality early childhood education, and they're talking about that in the Elizabeth Warren camp. I also love Kamala Harris because she's been working on criminal justice reform issues just like I have for the last 13 years, and I want someone who's going to be focusing on that space as well. All right. Uh Mr. Lucas, uh, you tweeted out earlier today that uh, some, some things never uh, change, and you were talking about issues that were brought up on KCTV5 yeah. and former debates 25 years ago. And you know, one of the things that doesn't change are issues concerning housing. This is something that affects so many people in Kansas City. We know that there are a lot of people who live in affordable housing in Kansas City. What can you tell me, Councilman Justice, about what is your plan uh, to include as many people as possible in an affordable housing program that works for everyone? When you look at housing, you have to look at three main things, Brad. You have to look at creation, making sure that we're building housing in places where people work, close to transportation lines, close to educational opportunities. You also have to make sure, though, that you are preserving the existing stock. Right now, we have over 9,000 vacant and abandoned properties that we can be working, and we are working right now, to get those turned back, put on the property tax rolls, and people living in the houses again. And then finally, we have to work on stabilizing the housing, because guess what? As things continue to improve, we need to make sure that people are able to stay in place. One of the things that I'm very passionate about is making sure that men and women in Kansas City can age in place. I want a community where you're able to live there from the time that your child is born until the time that you're ready to leave this planet. And I think we can do that if we focus on those three things. And Councilman Justice, on that note, uh, why do you think it is that we have such a lack of affordable housing right now in the city? And that is something that's become such a big issue in this uh, election. You know, one of the things that I've seen over the last 20 years in my law practice, I'm a pro bono legal um, lawyer. I oversee all of the free legal activity at my firm. And, and one of the things I've seen is you can eventually find affordable housing for someone, but guess what? It's never near where you need to go to work. It's never near where you need to go to school. And it's never near a transportation line. And so one of the things that we've seen is we're building it in the wrong places. We also have seen, I think, an increase, unfortunately, in focusing on one type of, of housing. And we need to focus on preserving what we already have. Candidate Lucas, your, your uh, 30 seconds to respond to that. Sure. On, on housing, this is an area that I come from with some passion. I, I grew up and part of my life was homeless. So I, I know what it's like. I, I know family of mine that are still dealing with those sorts of issues. What we need to do is make sure we're not demolishing lots of housing stock, which is something that we've done in the last 10 years, four years rather. Another thing we need to do is in incentives. We need to make sure if we're incentivizing a project, there is a percentage affordable housing. There's no reason for taxpayers to put in $15 million plus in a building buildings that are only going to luxury tenants. We need to do a much better job of being impactful in the housing space. All right, let's move on. This question will remain uh, with candidate Lucas. Jobs and, and workforce. Uh, we did not get Amazon. We're losing the Harley Davidson plant. Uh, those are two negative stories. There's a lot of positive stories about jobs, but still we can do better in Kansas City about attracting jobs and retaining jobs. Your plan for that? Yeah, I, I think there are a few different things. First of all, back to our incentive policy, we need to make sure when we're incentivizing, we're not just looking for one or two big home run projects. There's not always going to be an Amazon. There isn't always going to be a Cerner. We have a lot of small businesses in Kansas City. We have a lot of startups that we need to do a much better job of supporting. Another thing we need to do is move away from the classic just real estate style tax incentive. What if there's a small business here that's been working for years and decades and is bringing on more workforce? Those are the types of people I want to give incentives to. Businesses that
that have been in Kansas City, businesses that are creative, and frankly, that's what our economic development policy needs to build around. Not just home runs, but basics in our neighborhoods, in our communities, and supporting small business and entrepreneurs who've been in Kansas City and committed for years. Candidate Justice, you have 30 seconds. You know, we can chase after the big ones, and we can look to bring more jobs to the city, and we, we need to make sure that we have those opportunities. But at the end of the day, over 70% of our economy is based in the small business space. And the improvements that we have seen, the progress that is not just downtown, is in the space of small businesses. And when we are talking about incentives, when we're talking about making sure that we're keeping the city moving forward, it starts in that space. And so one of the things that I want to do is make sure that we're building up the talent and training the next workforce. One thing I'd like to follow up on that with each of you on is, is the competitive advantage we talk about other cities in the country, but what about places like Overland Park and Lee Summit? What is Kansas City, Missouri's competitive advantage over the, some of these suburban districts that have been more business friendly at times? Well, I mean, respect to every suburban community, but the action is in Kansas City, the excitement. You have a diverse workforce, you have an educated one, you're in the center of the metro area. So being at the crossroads of things, we can do a much better job in some ways of talking about brand Kansas City and making brand Kansas City attractive again for that small business that's here or that entrepreneur who's thinking about whether to settle in KC or Overland Park. Councilman Justice. And Pete, I'm actually seeing, um, to the contrary, folks really excited about doing business in Kansas City. I have had folks reach out to me in the last week alone saying, you know what, if you do one thing as the next mayor of Kansas City, keep making sure that you are a good place to do business because it's working. Progress is fragile, and we've talked a little bit about progress tonight, and we need to make sure we have strong leaders to keep this moving forward. Next for uh, Candidate Justice, uh, obviously hotel supply has been a big topic lately. We are now surpassing demand in a very good economy. How concerned are you by it and, and have we overbuilt? I do not believe we've overbuilt. At the same time, I think we need to make sure we take a look at what we're doing moving forward. We have seen, obviously, an increase in building hotels, and that's fantastic. And as I understand it, we are already exceeding our expectations on booking out our new convention hotel, and that's a good thing. At the same time, we need to sit back and kind of look at what's next for Kansas City. When I think about what we need to be building next, it's not hotels, it's housing, it's transportation, it's small business incubators, the things that we're going to need to take this city to the next level. You know, my view is, and you were asking about distinctions, we have overbuilt, and particularly overbuilt in the world that we're giving substantial incentives to launch of these hotels. You've heard about the Convention Center Hotel, which was already in excess of a $40 million cost to taxpayers, plus tax breaks, but there's also a new hotel going up on 9th and Broadway. It got almost 90% tax breaks. We're continuing to build this supply. It's not necessarily competitive. It's not necessary. And frankly, I think we need to get out of that space, allow the private market to work the way it should. Follow up here with um, candidate Quentin Lucas. All right, we're on par, unfortunately, for another high body count in Kansas City, top five per capita murder rate in the country. Um, when you look at the trend that has happened specifically this year, year over year, what can we do? And obviously you and I and three of us have talked about this a lot, but, but what ha can we do as a community, as a city, as the potential next future mayor to reverse this trend? You know, the thing that was 25 years ago that was on the lead story of the news on Channel 5 years ago mm -hmm. was the homicide count. And I think it still is. It's something we fundamentally have to change. Two solutions, resources and relationships. I'm someone who continues to believe that we need enough police officers to address the problem. We've seen a drop in headcount, and I think we need to to see particularly with the headcount that exists, more people out in the neighborhoods, more neighborhood policing. There was a candidate field of 200 plus candidates. I was the only one who did multiple ride-alongs with the Kansas City Police Department. We need to work with them. On the relationship side, we need to make sure that when police are in those neighborhoods, they have the time to build relationships with neighborhood leaders, with families and others. We need to invest further in our school resource officer program, something that the city of Tampa led to a dramatic decrease in violent crime. And then finally, social workers and mental health. So many people in this justice system are really dealing with criminal justice, pardon me, mental health issues, and we need to make Make sure that's addressed. Candidate Justice. Pete, as, as a, your state senator, I actually worked hard on this issue to make sure that we are addressing things at the systemic level that we need to address it at to keep moving forward. As your state senator, I, I made criminal justice reform happen. As your city council person, I have gone forward and I have put forth things that are starting to make a difference in the domestic violence space. Whether it's a domestic f violence fatality review board, which never existed until we did it last year at the state and local level, or putting protections in for domestic violence survivors when they need to escape from their leases. These are things we can continue to do together at the same time as increasing police officers on the street, at the same time as increasing funding for specialty court services. These are the ways we're going to get out 
out of this hole. And guess what? This is decades in the making. This is something that's been going on for generations. And until we take a hard look at it and hit it head on, it's never going to happen. All right, this question will be for Councilperson uh, Justice. Uh, we had a terrible winter. We had a horrible winter. It caused havoc, created havoc on our streets. You probably drove over a few potholes as you were coming over to Channel 5. Mm -hmm. The problem isn't just potholes, because we know that every city, every municipality deals with that. One of the problems that comes back to the city council is it's through the city council's purse strings that, that designates the money for those potholes, and yet we continue to hear that we've run out of money or we, you know, we haven't planned for this or it was, it was a bad year, but doesn't the buck stop with the city council? Doesn't the buck stop with you with potholes? Absolutely, with potholes, with crumbling streets, with crumbling sidewalks, with all of the ways we move around the city. Absolutely, it stops with us. And that's why I'm going to create, as your next mayor, a new Department of Transportation to make sure that we're finally getting it right. Because we're not doing the planning necessary to not just take over the potholes, but make sure that we're moving forward in a systemic way that fixes all of our roads and sidewalks. And we can do that if we start doing planning and we start coordinating with the other ways that we move around the city, including the Kansas City Area Transit Authority and the streetcar. These are the things we can do in a thoughtful manner that haven't necessarily been done. We're always chasing after the tough winter. We're always chasing after the holes in the ground. It's time to start forward thinking, and that's something that we can do if we put things in a streamlined manner under a single Department of Transportation. Mr. Lucas? You know, to me, the issue isn't so much planning. We, we have planned. We just need to hold up our promises. I'll give an example. Two years ago, Kansas Cityans voted to support an $800 million infrastructure bond. In that, we promised we wouldn't build new roads. And then what happened? The city council approved a construction of a $9 million road, some ways to nowhere, up north. Councilman Justice voted in favor of that. So that was $9 million that's not going to filling potholes, $9 million not going to the basic infrastructure we said we'd do. While it's interesting to talk about new departments and new programs and all these things under the sun, the real idea is let's do what the taxpayers expect us to do. Let's do what we said we would do. And that's what I would do as mayor, making sure that our departments actually reflect what we have told the voters was going to happen. We can all dream of a world someday that there are no potholes <laughs> on Kansas City, Missouri streets. All right, this question, we're going to stay with uh, Councilman uh, Lucas. The airport is underway. We've, we've broken ground on it. Uh, that issue, for the most part, has been set aside. But how do we make sure that, that Kansas City, uh, that the airlines are keeping up with their financial into this? How do we, how do we hold their feet to the fire that they're going to do what they say they're going to do? Sure. First, what we really do is have a slightly different process than what we had to get here. It has to be open. It has to be transparent. It has to be accountable. Uh, we needn't relitigate the whole airport procurement process, but that was not the best look or even really a good look for Kansas City. People didn't know what was going on. We had factions. We had airlines. We had a number of different issues. What I would do going forward is making sure not only do we have regular check-ins, something that we have added in recent months, but we also are making sure that we are having regular conversations with stakeholders that the public actually knows about. So instead of what we had this fall when the airport committee was saying every week or so, we're this close to a deal and then we'd wait a month and then we're this close to a deal and wait another month, what we really need to do is make sure that we actually have some consistent reporting process and more than anything, one that is open and transparent. We can't have backdoor deals and private rooms or anything of that sort. What we need to have and make sure we have is an open process long term. Candidate Justice? You know, Brad, one of the things that's really great about the process is that we have learned a lot. And one of the things that I've learned is everything that I would have done differently had I been in charge. And that's a big way that I am different than Mayor Sly James. Because from the very beginning, I would have stepped forward and said, you know what? We're not going to press pause just because the, the people of Kansas City say they're not ready for an airport. Instead, we're going to open the procurement process and we're going to have all of the ideas come to the table. And we didn't do that. And I have learned from that. And one of the things I'm excited about is we've put protections in now. Everything from a very lock solid development agreement to a transparent process where we have community leaders from all over the region who are sitting at the table and giving us feedback and then in return they are telling us you know what we, we are letting them know what they're doing so they can go out into the community and share that we're going to continue that because if we press autopilot right now the whole thing will be a failure instead we have to make sure we get it done right Canada Lucas would you say that this is a transparent process as of right now uh, the short answer is, I don't know the answer to that. I serve on the city council, I serve on the airport committee, and I think I've continued to get surprises about the project well into 2019. So my unfortunate answer might be no. 
And I think we need to do better with that. Uh, I was on your radio show, and there are many times where we would all be kind of blindsided by what happened. And then my final point is it's intriguing to hear Councilman Justice, who has been the chair of the airport committee since the beginning of our council time, say that she wasn't in charge of the process. I mean, I do think when we say the buck stops here, it does stop with the people that are in charge, and we can't necessarily say it was somebody else's responsibility. So where would you put that blame, Councilman Justice, on the uh, airport lack of transparency? I would argue that there is transparency right now because what we have in place is a system where we have a development agreement that says the airlines are paying for this and they're backing the debt. We have regular check-ins making sure that everybody hears about it and when I talk about what I would have done differently I'm going way back to when the airlines first said we're gonna build this we're gonna pay for it and we're gonna back the debt and our current mayor said you know what we're gonna press pause and we're gonna switch to the geo bond instead. We should have all as a council not just me we should have all stepped up and said you know what our community deserves more and that's why I know moving forward we're going to continue I'm going to continue to lead in that manner all right next question for candidate Quentin Lucas um, when you look at obviously Kansas City's first medical cannabis clinic so that one ten times in a row <laughs> has opened uh, more will follow if you could weigh in on the uh, medical marijuana conversation in Kansas City, what's next and what can the next mayor potentially do on that note? You know, there are lots of things we can do. The city of Springfield, Missouri has actually come up with zoning regulation relating to the marijuana space. How do you keep it away from schools? How do you make sure neighborhoods are safe? How can we keep right, this in a, some sort of fair process? We need to do that in Kansas City. Something else that I've done in the criminal justice space is to suggest that we should really look to in essence, we've decriminalized marijuana in the city, making sure that there aren't people that are continuing to have these marijuana convictions on their record, if it's a small amount, if it's a misdemeanor amount. What we need to make sure we're doing as we're talking about marijuana or anything new is to see how we can be fair, how can we make sure our community is safe, and how do we make sure there aren't inequities in terms of how different people are treated. And that's what I would do. I've served on the Planning and Zoning Committee, know a lot about boring zoning issues, and I think that's going to be key for us long term. Candidate Justice? So the state law that, that has allowed this to happen is very clear that we are not allowed to be more restrictive at all than they have passed at the state level. And so one of the things that we're going to have to do is make sure that we implement the true spirit of the law. If there are opportunities for us to make it better, then we should absolutely do that. But right now, we are waiting to see how the state rolls this out. And one of the things I'm excited about is that I have been working with the state legislature and the state government for 13 years now. I have the relationships to make sure that we're doing it fairly. I have the legal leadership ability to bring people together to make sure it's implemented correctly. And that's exactly what I'm going to do as the next mayor. All right. Quick question for both of you. Uh, uh, Councilwoman, uh, uh, Councilwoman Justice, mm -hmm. this one's first one's for you. What is, the, what is one thing that Kansas City needs that doesn't have that you could help bring to Kansas City? We do not have right now a transportation um, system that's working for everyone. We have a regional transit authority that is having fits and starts. We are not getting people to their jobs and we need to have a regional approach to that. So one of the things that I can do, because this is what I do best, bring people to the table, roll up our sleeves and get things done. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that we are coordinating all of the ways we move around this city and coming up with real solutions to make sure that we are moving people from their jobs to school and to home. And if we get that right, we're going to be able to address all all of the other issues that we're talking about right now, that key piece is missing. And you can't just focus on one issue without focusing on all of them. And so if I look at what I could do and bring to that space, it's finally coming up with a regional solution to our transportation problems. Candidate Lucas? You know, I think what we're lacking right now is a, a clear and consistent housing policy. We talked about the incentive space before. Our policy has been to incentivize lots of luxury developments in parts of the city that are unaffordable to most Kansas Cityans. What have I done while on the council? I'm not talking about what I'm doing in two years or what I did five years ago. What I've done on the council and what's before us right now, a $75 million fund to support housing rehab, to get people more jobs, particularly in the inner city of Kansas City, to get people more access to go from rental to home ownership. That's going to be key. I've also proposed ordinances that allow us to look at how we can be more inclusive in our zoning so we don't have the same patterns of residential segregation that the city has had for frankly, its entire history. And so I think what you need is somebody who has a track record on the city council of collaboration. That's what I've done on a number of ordinances. That's what I've done with 12 housing ordinances. And that's what I'll do as mayor. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Time now for closing statements. You go first. All right. Thank you very much. We have seen progress in this city. There is no doubt. But we have a tremendous amount of work to do because guess what? We are at a point in our city 
where we have streets that are not working, we have sidewalks that are crumbling, we have educational opportunities that are not available to everyone, and frankly, we have a crime problem that's unconscionable. And what you need is a mayor who has the leadership experience, someone who shows up, who gets things done. And that's exactly what I've been doing for the last 13 years, making sure that we keep the city moving forward. Whether I'm fixing a crumbling sidewalk in front of a school, coming up with really innovative solutions for domestic violence survivors, or working on and taking through to the very end the new single terminal airport at KCI. These are the things we need out of the next mayor, and that's exactly where I'm going to be for you. I'm Quint Lucas, and I'm running largely because I'm tired of being an exception. As I told you before, I grew up knowing homelessness. I grew up with a single mother, and I was able through great teachers, great opportunities and faith to get to where I am today. But that doesn't exist for enough people in Kansas City. That's why on city council and as your mayor, I've worked on important issues. And when I say collaboration, for me, collaboration isn't waiting for Jefferson City to decide to address an issue. It's been reforming incentives. It's been talking to your school leadership. It's been meeting with the Kansas City Police Department. It's been working with firefighters, police, and so many others to make our city better every day. And it's been talking about public health at times when people don't do it enough. I'm running for mayor because we do need to recognize that there's no reason for momentum unless it's evenly shared. I'll make sure it is, and that's what I'll do as your mayor. Thank you for the time today. I want to thank both candidates for coming in today, this evening. This has been a great discussion about the present of Kansas City and about the future of Kansas City. So I want to thank both of you candidates coming in and much continued success thank in you. the future. And I want to thank you all for watching tonight on KSMO TV and on KCMO Talk Radio. Thank you. Now it's your turn. If you're not registered, get out and get registered. And finally, if you are registered, make sure that you tune in to all of the debates, all the forums. The Kansas City Star has several upcoming forums. This is an important part. This is an important time for Kansas City. And these are two candidates who need all of our help to help the future of Kansas City be even better. Election Day, by the way, coming up on June 18th. Thank you for joining us.